Welcome back to Salty Country. If you're just joining the channel for the first time, I'm Tim. Uh, my wife Melody <clears throat> sometimes helps in the videos and and uh, she's learning to operate the excavator. So um, we share our adventures, our chores here on the farm in Northwest Georgia. So uh, if you'd like to check out some of our other episodes and see if it's something you're interested in, we welcome you to check that out. And if you like the content, subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, this morning, it's about 40 degrees, 42, somewhere around there. Slight breeze. Uh, gonna get out here this morning. I got some parts in this week that I've had on order for the excavator for about a month. So I'm gonna get out here and and look at the uh, excavator to see how difficult it's gonna be to change out some of these parts. I got new rubber boots for the joysticks. That should be a pretty simple fix. I've got a uh, glow plug relay. My glow plugs aren't turning on. Uh, it hadn't been tremendously cold here, so excavator's still starting fine. But uh, we'll see how difficult it's going to be to get to that relay. I know where it's at. I had the cat dealership pull up the schematic, show me where it's at. I'm going to change it out this morning if it's not too difficult to get to. So stick around. There's no telling what we'll end up doing today. All right, under the seat of the excavator, there's this access panel. Take the key, open it. I'm going to take off this panel right here. It has uh, relays and stuff like that in it. This is the fuses, but we're gonna pull this panel off and take a look in there real quick. See, see how difficult this uh, glow plug relay is gonna be to change out. All right, I got the panel off. As you can see, there's a lot going on inside this panel. The glow plug relay is all the way over in behind this stuff, bolted to this wall on the inside. So I think I'm going to check out YouTube to see if I can see where someone's changed this out or I'll talk back to the cat dealership to see if there's a simple way that I can drop this entire box. I might be able to pull this bolt and a couple other bolts and, and let the box drop down for a little bit easier access. But yeah, I'm not gonna, not gonna tackle that today as long as she'll uh, fire up. Uh, we'll wait till another day till I got a better understanding of how to get to it before we tackle that. Uh, you may see the bolts sticking out over here. I gotta get the right bolts. Um, I just put those in there to hold this. This is a heat shield from the engine. I just put that in there to uh, keep the heat from the engine compartment out from under the seat. Also got this hinge right here on this door that opens up, it's broken, and I'm going to weld it at some point. But it's not affecting anything, so I'm going to uh, wait for a better day, warmer day, before I tackle that. We'll take a quick look at these boots too. Here's the boots that I ordered on the joysticks. They're uh, cracked and deteriorated and torn. I just want to keep the water out and uh, I want to change these out. Also, at some point, I'd like to get me a, a new seat, but for right now, that's good. If, uh, if it gets wet, you get a wet butt, but try to keep this thing covered with a tarp if it's going to be raining but one of the things that we talked about in a 
past episode was we're looking at building onto the shed, having an addition to make it where it's like a true barn. Um, the thought is we'll put the boat in the, in the excavator and the T300 down there. And I got a farm tractor that's already parked in the shed. So uh, we'll get all that stuff in one area, get some power down there to it so we can uh, keep batteries charged and that kind of stuff and have some lights. But yeah, it's, uh, it's been a pretty wet week. We've had a couple inches of rain earlier in the week. The ground is still kind of rotten real wet muddy so we'll see uh, later today I may get the excavator out and go down to pasture two and do some clearing down there along the fence line this is uh, the area that we're working on in past couple episodes uh, previous to us going to pasture two this is behind uh, the yard at the upper end of pasture one. This is the area that had all the trees around all the block that I had uh, stacked at some point in the pasture. So um, got all those down, got them piled up. We'll get those moved and staged into a better burn pile. I don't like to burn right up against trees. So I, put, I get it out in the clear area. So we just kind of got it out of the way for right now. But yeah, we're gonna get all this cleaned up. I brought a couple pallets home from work. We're going to restack all this block so that I can move it around with the T300. So anyway, stick around. We'll be getting into something today. We'll uh, share kind of what we do today. Oh yeah, by the way, come out this morning to start the H2 just to make sure the battery's still good and charged. Fully charged it last weekend. Uh, it acted right. All the gauges finally started working and then they quit working again. So come out here this morning. It's been sitting here for six days. Um, so come out here this morning and the battery is dead nothing no light in on the interior nothing so it may be a bad battery or it may be something drawing my battery down but i'm gonna definitely have to get this thing to the mechanic and get them to figure it out i'm out here at the excavator we're gonna see if we can change these boots out if you notice on the boot it's got a slightly higher side here where the handle sit notice this handle kind of leans in this piece on this one's kind of broke loose, so it's it's not in the right position. So anyway, the uh, we're gonna see if we can get this boot off and, and get this uh, new one on. bottom lip just snaps in under the housing. See if we can get it snapped out. I think on this new boot I can maybe stretch it over the handle. This old boot may tear more, but uh, I'm going to Probably just go ahead and cut this a little bit loose. This boot here is actually on backwards. It should have been on like this way because the handle. So I think at some point somebody had been in here and just put the boot back in backwards. And that's part of the reason why it broke as bad as it did. So I'm gonna cut this thing off. Let's see if I can get the new boot to stretch over the handle. 
you know, the, these boots keep dust and water and stuff like that out. Um, being that I don't have the barn ready right now, I keep this thing covered with a tarp, but I just want to uh, make sure that I prevent as much water from getting in the controls here as possible. I think I'm going to have to run and grab some uh, soap or something like that so I can get this thing to slide over easily. I decided against soap. Got some trusty WD-40 here. I'm going to spray a little bit of, if it'll spray, it's so cold. I'll just clean this off. After I get it on. That went pretty good. Here's gonna be the difficult part. This thing's pretty stretchable. So let's see if I can get it to slide over this bottom part of this handle here. Oh yeah. That was pretty good. So now I gotta get this lip locked in the bottom lip of this uh, handle. Let's we'll see if we can get that locked into position first. And then I'll try to get the bottom snapped in. All right. Let's see. Maybe I can get the front up there so I can hold it. work my way around. Okay, so I got it in there. All right, let's see if I can get this bottom lip to slide in. I'm gonna run and grab a screwdriver. All right, got me a couple screwdrivers. Let's see if I can get this started. This may end up being a little bit more difficult than I thought. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to pick up on the boot, try to turn this lip straight down and get it to drop in. I got the back and the inside to pop in. And what I figured out is if I can get this thing started and just push down on the entire boot, it seems to go in there like it's supposed to. All right, I gotta get this metal right here started. Okay, push down on the boot, and it's gone in. All right, it looks like my backside has come back out, so. It's one of those things where you uh, would probably be better off if you had an extra set of hands, but I'm gonna see if I can get it myself before I get Melody to come out here and help if I need her. Okay, so I've got three sides of it in, and this side is wanting to kind of pop up toward the top. So I'm having to see if I can get that lip in. All right, there we go. 
that wasn't too bad. Let me just double check and make sure. Yeah. I'll have to get me a rag and wipe that oil off. Get that cleaned back up. Okay, that wasn't bad. Now, no dust, no rain, moisture gets in there. So, wasn't that bad. So, I'm going to get a rag and we'll tackle the other side. All right, got back with the rag. Let's get this wiped off a little bit. I'll take some soap and water later on. A little bit warmer. Clean it up. All right. So let's uh, let's see what we can do with the other side now. All right, I'm repositioned on this side. This boot over here, same thing. Can't see it too good on the camera, but it's torn in between this first rib. So get my knife. Get it cut loose so I can get it off easier. This stuff, even though it's cracked, is still pretty pliable and flexible. So um, pretty good quality rubber they use on these. All right, so that one's off. Slope on this one, the, the high parts to the outside, the controller leans in, so it'll need to go on like this. Spray a little bit of WD on here, kind of wipe it. See if we can get this uh, boot to slip over. All right, got it over that part. Now we gotta get over the wide bottom of the handle. Get, I can get this under that front lip. There we go. Let's get it scooted over the back. That joker locked right into place. So the top's in. So, all right. Now comes the fun part of getting this bottom to pop in, but just take your time and work around. I think I got the back in good. Let's see if I can get this front to kind of start in, get this side right here okay looks like that's going good all right right here i gotta get this kind of started in all right so this thing wants to pop back out whenever you get it close. So I'm gonna see if I can get the majority of it pushed down. That's it. It uh, popped in there pretty good. I'll have to double check it. Make sure, nope, we're not in on the back. So take this back and get it pushed down good it's kind of difficult to see with the angle I'm working at here Here's where the screwdriver come in handy. Let's see if I can get this lip pushed down. It wants to kind of pop up in the middle. Get 
know what? I think I'm going to pull that side back out and get this side in a little bit better. I think it'll be easier to get this back in and I'm just dealing with the inside. Let me see if I can climb up here so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so we're going in good now on the back. This side right here, looks like the lip is in there. All right, maybe I'm blocking half the view, but sorry about that. All right, let me step back off the tractor onto the track. See if I'm in everywhere. Looks like we're in all the way around. So, All right, that wasn't too bad. Wipe this off. All right, so I got that one all buttoned up. It's locked in to the housing at the bottom. It's locked into the handle at the top. This side's good. So if you need to tackle the boots on your Mini X, it's a pretty quick process. You just gotta take your time. The bottom groove seems to be the hardest one to get in, but wasn't bad. That's gonna be all for this episode. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you like our content, subscribe to the channel. I wanna to touch on one thing though before I can sign off. Um, I was watching uh, Mike Morgan. I don't know if any of you other folks follow Outdoors with a Morgan. Um, Mike's got a great channel, him and Melissa. Um, this morning I was watching an episode and Mike was talking about struggling financially when they were younger. And that's 99% of us. You know, we just work, provide for our families and keep working, providing for our families, and eventually uh, we get a little bit more flexible with finances. So um, don't get discouraged. You know, a lot of folks live paycheck to paycheck, been there, done that. But uh, yeah, just keep a strong work ethic and uh, keep dreaming big, stay focused, you know, provide for your family necessities. And then later on, some of the wants and things that you uh, would like to have, maybe those things, uh, it'll work out and you can uh, achieve the goals that you've set. But yeah, I just, uh, when, he, when Mike mentioned that, it, uh, it struck home with me because uh, Melody and I both have worked our whole life. We've never not worked, but yeah, just uh, stay positive, keep doing what you're doing, and uh, maybe uh, the finances will come sooner than later in life. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, you appreciate things more in life later on when you've worked for things your whole life, you've worked hard. So anyway, I'm, I'm not gonna keep rambling. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.